Paul, when when can we um, start to see the effects um, across the national parks and I think it's in a short matter of time, you're going to see these dollars start going out to communities across uh, across the country, both in the Land and Water Conservation Fund and being directly appropriated to the uh, to the parks and to our forests. So this is mandatory funding. Uh, there's no doubt that it's going to go there. So it's just a matter of uh, time, and we'll start seeing that very shortly. Speak to the um, the bipartisan effort around this and, and a lot of the bipartisan support in a, in a, a very heated election year. time. Uh, both sides are very divided right now. Um, so speak to kind of the, the bipartisan support that came together around this. You know, support for our public lands has brought Republican and Democrats uh, together uh, for the last uh, several years. Uh, in fact, if you look at the, the, the lands package that passed the last Congress, uh, it was uh, right in the middle of some very contentious times. Republicans and Democrats came together to pass the most significant public lands bill in, in a decade. And of course, the Great American Outdoors Act, it took Republicans and Democrats working together in the House and the Senate to pass the, the biggest conservation environmental bill in over 50 years. And it's the biggest infusion of dollars being invested into our public lands in the history of this country. And so uh, it didn't happen because of uh, a partisan uh, political uh, effort. It happened because uh, Congress dropped down, uh, dropped its, its partisan uh, swords and, and got to work in a, in a way that made things happen. Mm -hmm. And um, speak a little bit again just about uh, the longevity of this legislation for those who don't know yet. Um, uh, how, how long will these dollars be um, benefiting public lands um, and national parks for? Absolutely. So uh, for the next, uh, for the next uh, five years, there will be about $3 billion a year going toward conservation, none of which costs the taxpayer a dime because it's funded by offshore oil and gas revenues. And in perpetuity, beyond that five years, nearly $1 billion for the Land and Water Conservation Fund will continue to flow to communities uh, to protect our most uh, precious spaces, to help uh, places with uh, recreation efforts, ball fields, swimming pools, those kinds of things in our communities to help provide access to uh, minorities who may be unserved or underserved when it comes to recreation activity. So this is something that will last uh, for generations to come and benefit, benefit millions and millions of people who come to Colorado and beyond. Mm -hmm. Um, how important right now is this is this legislation to to your campaign and and you telling Coloradans um, right now um, just your commitment to um, to the environment in the state? Well, the Land and Water Conservation Fund is something that I've worked on uh, for almost twenty years now, uh, putting together uh, pieces that became the Great Sand Dunes National Park uh, using the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Uh, and you know, one of the first votes I took in uh, in the Senate was to protect the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And this is a really historic moment for Colorado. Uh, I think you can't look at it through the terms of politics. That's not what this is about. It's about making sure that we have an environment uh, that is better tomorrow than it is today, that we have protected those uh, most special places in Colorado, that we've given uh, future generations access to recreation that they didn't have today. Uh, that's why this is so important to Colorado and this country. Uh, you know, this is the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, conservation bill in over 50 years. Uh, and it's that for a reason, because Republicans, Democrats came together not because of politics, but because of good policy that represents one of the greatest ideas this country ever had, and that is our public lands.